Any other specific profile? Architect? No? I'm a researcher. A researcher? Fantastic. So um, I think we can get started now. Um, let me start by introducing myself. So I, I work at Google. I, I should be speaking. Do I, ha I have to speak from the mic because of the, of the video conference, right? Okay. Because I'm normally very loud. Being Italian, is it on? Is it? Yeah, it is on. Okay. Then I'll, I'll have to speak uh, not so loudly. Uh, I work at Google. I uh, am part of a team called Product Partnerships which is, uh, as the name says, a team that works with our product development teams. We, um, the product development teams are normally composed of engineers and, and very smart people. Uh, they normally use somebody else's contribution when there is, when there is uh, uh, the need to communicate something to external third parties or to create collaborations with the third parties. So you can call it a business development team or a partnerships team, that's what I do. Uh, and I, I specifically work on uh, mobile distribution platforms for content, so for news and any other online content. The, today we'll be talking about AMP, but Google News, if it's something that you use and, and you know about, I also work on that. Uh, or Play Newsstand, in Italian, Ledicola Play, uh, is also something that I, uh, that I helped uh, develop and, uh, uh, and build in, um, in Italy. So, can we... Stand by. Okay, great. So today we'll be talking about the mobile, the accelerated mobile pages. Whoops, one sec. Again, show of hands, who's heard of, of IMPs or known as AMP, accelerated mobile pages only? Fantastic, three, four people. So we'll take it from the beginning. Uh, acceler accelerated mobile pages uh, are interesting, fun, as you know. They're fast, as the name says. Um, and, and they are an open source initiative. That's the, probably the most important element to it. Uh, open source initiative because it's not just a Google initiative, it's an industry-wide initiative. Did you guys go to the Twitter uh, keynote? Earlier today, uh, at 12, in the Sala di Priori, and uh, Mark Little said, we embrace AMP, we, we embrace accelerated mobile pages, it's a big part of what we do. They help make uh, the web faster. Yes, they do. So it's an industry, it's an industry initiative uh, that sees Google as a big actor of it, but also the participation of Twitter, the participation of Pinterest, the participation of many other parties in order to make it succeed. It's a way to change the mobile web really a way to change the mobile web. They find their origin in a dialogue that we've been having with news provider and content provider, um, initially at European level, but really at global level. Uh, within the framework of the Digital News Initiative, if you're, if you're not familiar with the Digital News Initiative, it is really an exchange between technology providers and content providers. Uh, there's a very interesting website called digitalnewsinitiative.org that you should go look up. Um, I, I find it a, a very, very worthwhile initiative because it does bring together the world of the legacy uh, uh, content, the, the world of content, the content news, where these new disruptive platforms, like we understand, uh, everyone has, every one of us is, like when we said Twitter, uh, Google and, uh, and Pinterest, Snapchat, et cetera, et cetera. Having a dialogue is, uh, is really, really helpful. Within that framework, within that dialogue, the first, the first request that the publishers had towards us was help us figure out mobile. Help us figure out mobile. If you, those who are journalists uh, and those who are researchers may know that today the vast majority of, tra of traffic is on mobile. So uh, we used to hear mobile first, now it's almost mobile only, because mobile, there is a very famous um, uh, analyst called Ben Evans who publishes a presentation on key internet trends every year. It just came out, so Ben Evans. The title in the last two years is Mobile is Eating the World. So mobile is becoming everything on the web. Um, it's definitely something that is very, very relevant 
for Google. So we announced last year that the number of searches on mobile had become the, the majority within our world. Um, uh, the editor, the publishers are clearly asking us, help us figure out mobile. The, 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 first, the first part of figuring out mobile is what do people on mobile do? And one thing that they don't want to do is wait. Just full stop, as simple as that. Once a page takes more than three seconds to load, all of a sudden you start losing the vast majority of your traffic. No traffic, no readers, no nothing. No audience, no money, no nothing. So the first element, the first uh, uh, key and important part is really the speed. One statistic that isn't here but that, that has always impressed me as well is that every second of delay in loading a page equals 30% decrease in conversion rates of whatever you're trying to do. So sales, e-commerce, one second of delay, 30% of the revenues go. That's how important this is. Um, and that's just, uh, in reality, uh, uh, the first part, even though it's a big part of it, but it's the one that then enables tackling every other big issue that the publishers are facing. And, and publishing on mobile today does pose a gigantic number of issues. Uh, there is new business model is, models emerging. There is no way, new ways of, uh, of uh, accessing content and, uh, uh, and reading content. Um, uh, new formats, of course, that have to be tailored to a fruition on a smaller screen. Uh, imagine what a video is on a mobile versus uh, what it used to be on a, on a desktop on a, or a TV screen. Um, Video is the talk of the town in this moment, so videos will be the um, or will start increasing to a level where it will represent a gigantic portion of content consumption of the web. Everybody is going towards video, so all these challenges become even bigger when applied to the world of mobile. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with ad blockers, but today, 22% of 22% of users in the UK have an ad blocker installed. What an ad, block do, uh, ad blocker does is that it lets pages load content, but it blocks the ads from loading. Big, big issues that publishers are trying to tackle. The first thing that in this dialogue was made clear was, okay, let's first give a fantastic fruition experience to, to users. Let's make it pleasant just to access the content so that they, then the engagement can, uh, can uh, start right, and can increase. The solution is speed. Uh, let me just go one slide up, but then grab your attention here. Uh, you've, you have your smartphones on your, on your hand. Try loading a page and beat me. I just, I just opened a browser. Notifications off. I just opened a browser. Uh, and did a search for Matteo Renzi, a topic of news, and loaded up this news carousel that you see in front of me. You ready? I'm going to tap on it and show you the speed of accelerated mobile pages and see if you beat me. <laughs> ready? You, you load a mobile page, whichever you want, and I load this and see if you beat me. Ready? Three, two, one, go. Did you beat me? Want to try the next? Three, two, one. Next. I won. Next. I won. Did I win? Did you beat me? Okay. You, you, get the, you get the gist. So accelerated mobile pages are incredibly fast. They are instantaneous. Excuse me? There is cash involved as well, but that's not the reason. The reason is this. <coughs> So uh, there are three technical people in, um, in the room who may recognize what, the, what this is, but for the ones like me who are non-technical, uh, let me tell you what it is. So pages used to be loaded with code. That code is normally called JavaScript, but the JavaScript is real computing code. So every time that the page was loaded, in reality what was happening within the browser is that there would be an app running with real code. Each line of JavaScript executes something, some smart task. 
uh, accelerated mobile pages bring, bring this variety and wealth of content down to one line. So the entire, the entire diversity and the entire um, uh, weight of code is reduced to just one library of JavaScript that is uploaded automatically. One second. It's better represented this way. This is a desktop page of the New York Times. And by the way, New York Times is already one of the publishers that have put a lot of care in speeding up their mobile pages. This is a desktop page of the New York Times. You go on the newyorktimes.com, the home page, and all of a sudden the page starts calling other things. Hey, let me, let me, deliver, let me deliver a video, let me deliver an ad, let me deliver a, a gallery, let me deliver the content. And all of a sudden these things just go out and grab content that is then displayed in the page. Then the New York Times says, ooh, on mobile it has to be faster. Let me bring that down. So let me do it again. This is desktop. This is their mobile page. Yeah? Already incredibly uh, uh, simplified. This is mobile. This is AMP. This is AMP. So this is why accelerated mobile pages are faster. They simply simplify the amount of code that is executed within the page. Same page. Nothing changes. Less code. That's why they're faster. I want to stress that side. So that's a, a very important element. You know the source, and now you know how it works. Accelerated mobile pages are accelerated only. Nothing else goes missing. The design remains the design of the publisher. The layout remains the layout of the publisher. The content remains the content of the publisher. The monetization tools remain the monetization tools of the publisher. No matter what existed before, it still exists in the new version of the pages. So there is no impact on the business model, there is just a better consumption experience. And that is absolutely vital to understand because it does represent a way to rewrite for the mobile web, but it doesn't have an impact on what publishers are used to do. So rather than create another tweak, tweak Another twist, okay, I have to adapt to this. In reality, it's, hey, just write it differently, but keep doing what you're doing, because uh, you, should be, uh, you should be fairly happy with it. Um, with AMP, publishers keep getting the same data, the same access to information that they used to have. You know how it's vital to do that data mining on usage? Well, that data min mining capabilities remain. Um, cache does come into play. Uh, as you say, uh, but it's an extra layer of further acceleration that brings content faster to users. So not, not only uh, amps are faster by themselves, they are also brought closer to the user by using the, uh, 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 the caching network of the different providers that are involved. In the case of Google, we use Google Cache. By the way, feel free to ask questions because I feel that you have one. You don't? No. You do, okay. <laughs> yes? You said all the content's exactly the same as on the publisher's own. Yep. What about advertising? The same thing. Exactly the same the Okay, so with a caveat, apologies, with a caveat. Apologies, with a caveat. So um, from the technical perspective, yes. Uh, from the UI perspective, no, in reality. You have a point there. So. Um, Developing for AMP or, or, or creating the AMP framework and ecosystem has required a lot of parties to adapt to the new framework and to develop components within the AMP uh, JavaScript library in this case. Um, that's, that's, that what hasn't, that's what hasn't changed. So if, some peop if, if uh, publishers use uh, the ad servers of Google, they can still use the ad servers of Google. If they use the ad servers of AppNexus, uh, another provider, they can still use AppNexus. Same goes for OAS, same goes for all the, uh, you know, all the, all the platforms that are out there. Um, the AMP initiative has put some constraints of what advertising can be delivered. Uh, it goes back to the point on ad blocking, and then this may become a bigger conversation, but 
on ad blocking, one of the reasons why it's become so widespread is because, or it, it, this is the users telling us, uh, the users telling us is that uh, advertising formats have become incredibly invasive and they slow down the experience and they are normally a pretty bad experience. So we have tried to speed up the advertising serving and block the most invasive formats, which are now, um, they, they cannot be rendered within the AMP framework. Uh, the very invasive formats that just expand and take over the page, they, are, uh, they cannot be reproduced in this format. There are some technical constraints in the size of images, for example, that can be reproduced. Um, then apologies for the misunderstanding. Um, what I uh, was referring to was demonetiz demonetization through advertising. One thing that I think is key is to give publishers the ability to monetize through advertising with the same type of ROI, right? The format is a tool to get to the ROI. The the perception today is that in order to chase that ROI, formats have become so invasive that they've become disruptive. And in reality, they hurt. They hurt the publishers. By introducing, introducing stricter guidelines, uh, our feeling for the moment, because it's very early days, but we're actively measuring the impact, is that we may bring the formats back a bit, but keep the ROI identical, if not higher. Uh, it may be higher because the monetization is higher on the format itself, so we're talking about CPMs, or it may be higher because the engagement is higher. On ad blocking, I'm happy to have a, very, a, a much longer conversation because there are so many aspects to it, uh, and I find it fascinating. So back to this, cache, one thing is deliver one page from a single server and serve the entire world from that single server. Another thing is actually to cache the pages very close to the user and uh, make the uh, loading, uh, loading time very fast. Uh, this is another way to represent the, how the AMP pages work um, and how they have been embraced and developed today. So today, publishers actually live with normally uh, two sets of pages, some developed in traditional HTML and the one optimized for mobile that are built in AMP HTML, which is the new format. Take those pages, we accelerate them further through cache, and then we serve them on, uh, on our platforms. Let me stop there for a second in case there are other questions. Okay. So, this is what they this is what they they are and how they function. Um, how are they going? How are they being used? Uh, as I said, this is an open source initiative, super important. In the um, in the world of mobile news consumption on mobile mobile consumption uh, of news, uh, if you've been following the trends and and the, and the latest evolution, uh, you may have heard of Apple News, for example, or you may have heard of instant articles. We talk about these things all the time. Uh, we felt that it was really, really important to make our initiative an open source and not based on proprietary standards. And that's why uh, from the inset, we had all the other parties involved that I mentioned. Um, each and every one of us is trying now to give visibility to AMPs and really embrace them on the delivery side so that you can actually take, you know, r r see the benefit of AMPs in, uh, in, in action. Uh, we launched the support for AMP pages in search on the 24th of February of this year. Twitter just uh, announced it, I think they, they released it two or three weeks ago, the AMP pages. There is other platforms, pa Pinterest is supporting AMP pages. Um, Nuzzle, another platform is supporting AMP pages. What that means is that uh, we, and by we I mean each and every one of us, we are able to understand whether a 
page has an AMP equivalent, because there is a connection between the two. Uh, and when a page is called from a, mo a mobile device, we serve the AMP page and not serve the old legacy page. So that's, that has started on the 24th of February 2016. Uh, it was uh, first enabled in a, a subset of countries, or uh, in reality, uh, uh, probably the largest country, the United States, the UK, Italy, France, Germany, Spain, Japan, and, and it will be uh, further rolled out uh, across additional countries as the, uh, as the year goes. Um, you've, you've kind of seen this in action. I will not let you go through this dynamic GIF, uh, but you know what that means. This, this, is the, um, <coughs> this is the first set of publishers that have come on board. The uptake has been amazing. Initially, developing an open source initiative is, uh, is tricky because there's no benefit. I mean, they're not live yet. And at the same time, since there's nothing live, nobody can launch anything. So we, we took us about two quarters to get that ecosystem running with the all, all parties involved really investing on them. Google has done a lot to enable and help publishers to transform their pages into AMP pages. And these were some of the initial partners. Um, kind of blurry, sorry for that, but there is publishers from all over the world. Um, I don't know if what the majority of nationalities here, but uh, there's La Stampa, there was Corriere della Sera in Italy, there was Repubblica, there was, uh, uh, excuse me? Il Fatto Quotidiano was available, The Independent, The Financial Times, The New York Times, Trinity Mirror, uh, Kicker from Germany, they were all available. Oh, absolutely. The, you, in the, when we launched in the US, the, all the publishers. So in the Middle East, we do have uh, a few publishers that have started building AMP pages. What has happened is that the moment this initiative, we announced the initiative in uh, October of last year, correct? And then from October to February, we really worked hard to, to accelerate the progress. Uh, once we went, we went uh, public on the 24th of February, we released all the technical specifications. And, and we'll see what the tools are, uh, are in a second. But once we released the technical specifications, we saw an, an enormous uptake of AMP pages, of AMP HTML, uh, with publishers just going in and building their own pages. Uh, it, the, the response from the industry is, of course. I mean, of course. It makes so much sense. So from that day on, we've started seeing AMP pages being created all over the world. What about the financially? financially, there are no requirements. There are, there is... Just free yeah, so exactly. Yeah, exactly. So there is, it, it's actually better than that. There is a, uh, if you go on ampproject.org, you will see a nice button this button that says get started and it, which takes you to a step-by-step -step guide on how to create an AMP page. AMP is, it, it doesn't uh, change the programming language. It creates something called AMP HTML, but it's HTML. So it doesn't create a new programming language. Instead of having all the JavaScript's uh, code of third parties, it consolidates the JavaScript into one library, so it's simplified. Uh, coders, developers, don't have to learn a different language. They can look at the guide and say, okay, I used to write XYZ, and now I'm going to write XYZ231. Yeah, but it's the same language, it's the same way of coding a page. All they have to do is just simply use the tags that are provided on the step-by-step -step guide. So it's relatively simple. The, the complexity, I want to say, depends on, um, which we've observed, depends on the CMS that the publisher uses to create their pages. What is it for Google in it? Well, to, if, the, the straight answer is the web. That's, that's the web. Uh, we've always had a universal scope as a company. Uh, we fight for, defend, love the open web. And having a thriving open web, I, we think it's good for society, we think it's good for uh, publishers, we think it's good for a lot of people. Um, it's good for democracy if you want to take it to that level, and it's of course good for Google. 
So uh, we're very keen to develop our platform further through something that works much better on mobile devices. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So WordPress was one of the partners of the initiative, uh, which was great. Uh, they have built a plugin with, with, together with us. We have them out on the technical side. Um, WordPress today powers 28% of the web, which is an astonishing number. The, so you should definitely use the plugin. It's there to be used. What we've seen can cause some problems is the conflict with other plugins. So, um, can uh, I, uh, that I cannot answer, but I can give you the, the, the way to find out. So one thing that I wanted to share is these resources. Uh, the how-to guide, the step-by-step -step guide, is you can, found, you can find on amproject.org. Uh, and then there is two communities or two platforms where you can find these specific coding, uh, and these specific, uh, um, more detailed technical specifications. One is GitHub, which is a code repository. Uh, and the other one is Stack Overflow. Stack Overflow is a community, or it's a platform for communities to exchange on a given topic, and there is a part that is dedicated to AMP pages. So uh, on Stack Overflow, you'll probably find your answer. If there are plugins that you use that conflict with the AMP HTML one. Yes. Well, I mean, the, the challenges are never ending, but the, the, the things that we're focused on today are, uh, are a few. First is extend coverage, so make sure that this initiative scales to cover the globe, really. So how can we, uh, how can we accelerate adoption of AMP HTML pages in other countries? How can we extend it to other verticals? Uh, the, the examples that you've seen uh, are news pages, content pages. Um, a recipe page has different requirements. An e-commerce page has different requirements. Video has different requirements. So the, today, video can be embedded in an HTML page, but a proper video platform would have somewhat different requirements. So we are really working hard to extend the platform and make it embrace the web as a whole. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yes. It's still, so, it, it is still an evolving platform. I mean, it, it's still something in its infancy. So, l bits and pieces will have to be added. And as I said, I mean, uh, how to, you know, tags that support, that properly support e-commerce functionalities still have to be developed. So, there are things that uh, are still work in progress, but we're working, we're really focused on that now to make sure that we, s we solve all glitches, remove all the obstacles. Yes, please. Where does Google get started to set the end pages on the, their start? Uh, on the, you mean on the, on the actual, on the actual, the blue links? Yeah. Mm. Um, so, the, the, the answer is um, soon. Uh, the answer is our intention is to make sure that we use AMP HTML for all pages that are open through a mobile device, so all of them. Today, you've seen the carousel. Uh, there will be uh, the, the SIR page. What we want to make sure is to do it thoughtfully. And thoughtfully means in a way that um, helps everybody, doesn't surprise people, and, and makes sense for 
but, you know, for, for users, for publishers, for e-commerce platforms, etc., etc. Um, there is no point in rolling out something that has just been announced globally without before measuring the impact. So we are in that phase of adding the bits that are missing, understanding the real impact on uh, the proper impact on, uh, on fruition of content, which honestly today is incredibly positive. The early results that we've seen are incredibly positive. People are very, very happy about that, but we'll just be thoughtful and roll it out progressively across all the other canvases. I've already oh, implemented. It works now, yeah. The AMP pages on into my, our, our websites. Yep. Um, but I've never seen uh, the results in the SERP. Uh, but the Fatto Quotidiano, La Stampa, um, Corriere della Sera, Gazzetta dello Sport, already ser uh, Google already served the, the, yep. their results. This is. Uh, that depends, that very likely depends on your content. So the, the, it, in this moment, the way we, um, or what we use to display AMP pages is the carousel, the news carousel. So there is two steps to get there. First is you have to have an AMP page and then the content of that page has to be something of relevance for news. So I did a search for Matteo Renzi and every page on Matteo Renzi came up. And in the, into the local news uh, uh, world, yep. I have a network of uh, local website news, about 30 sites in, in, yep. in, into all the Italy. Um, we serve about 50,000 news every month, and, but I've never seen our news into the... It, what can the I suggest is like, let's, let's talk about it, but it's very likely because the content doesn't trigger the carousel. Uh, do you ha let's, let's do it together afterwards. Uh, we'll, we'll try a couple of times, but very likely the, um, uh, the content doesn't trigger the carousel. So it's, it may be so specific that there isn't enough wealth of content around these topics to, to generate the carousel that then comes up and shows the AMP HTML pages. But don't lose hope. Yes. Initiative. You said it was an open source initiative, anybody can do it, but it's a two-stage thing. It's authoring in AMP, and then it's the cash, uh, whether you get in the cash or not. And what seems to be the case is getting in the cash is not in the control of the publisher, even though the, so the tools are open source. So you can author whatever you like, but getting in the cash is not it's within the publisher's control. No, it's not getting in the cash. So for example, can I ask you a question? Can, you should try publishing something on Twitter which is there and, and, and instantaneously visible, they will serve the AMP HTML page of yours if you, if you send it on Twitter or Nuzzle, something like that. Yeah, but so that, that should work. Yeah. Good, so that you should see it there. Okay, great. <laughs> let, let, I wanna look at that afterwards. But the, um, uh, in Google, it's not that it's been it's not that the access of, to the cache is being uh, filtered or not, is that the news carousel, where you currently see AMP HTML pages, is only triggered, or is only visible, when there is enough information, when the query is interpreted as being relevant for current events, uh, and there's enough content to trigger the carousel. One page, if, if it's something on baking bread in Perugia, it's so specific that very likely there will be one page. And I'm not sure it's gonna be considered news. No news, uh, uh, short or, or very narrow uh, search, no carousel, no carousel, no AMP. No? So, so that's not just access to cache. An AMP HTML page will be cached anyway, it will just not be served. But who's making the judgment about what constitutes news at a sufficient level that it should be in the carousel. That is part of our search algorithm, as it's always been. So the AMP HTML don't affect that. Uh, the carousel in the news has always existed, or has existed for a while, let's put it that way, with the same logic of triggering that you see today. Enough content, newsy, newsy, newsy uh, query, the carousel. Right now we're serving AMP HTML pages. Um, 
you, the fact that you don't see a carousel for a specific, it's not just that you have MP HTML pages and therefore you're going to be uh, seeing it. The, f the way the search engine functions is still the same. So that would be the hurdle. The this last point, the difference is that if I'm used to seeing all news on Google News or through a general search, and then I become used to receiving all my news through an AMP uh, carousel, then I will only restrict myself to what I look for, which is on the carousel. That's, that's the point. I mean, it goes back to your speed point, that in a sense it narrows the range of news type information that I will be accessing as to what's on the carousel, probably. I'm not sure if I, if I agree with that. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, yeah. No, no, exactly. That's why I was saying I'm not sure I agree with that. Uh, I think people just scroll down the page. We, we've had the carousel before. I mean, we've had it so far. And that hasn't been one of the feedback that we've received from publishers, that people just stick to it and not go further down. In, in fact, the question that, that, that we get that question a lot, when will you make the AMP, the AMP pages available for the blue links? Uh, because it represents a gigantic part of the organic traffic of publishers. It's all the legacy content. It's all the, their archives, basically, uh, the way they see it. So, yes. Is there any connection between... <laughs> I want to give you some, some good positive news. Is there any connection between um, M pages and uh, Google News? Uh, what type of connection? For what, what type of thing, uh, what type of connection are you thinking about? Uh, Google, New, Google serves our news into Google News net, uh, yep. Network. But uh, I, was, I, thought, no, I think that um, I thought that Google uh, would serve my our AMP pages in the in the Google News in the part Google of News, the search, yeah, okay. okay. Uh, no, in reality, there is no connection. There is, or let's say, AMP, AMP pages do not affect the way Google News works. Google News as that part of our search uh, world, right? They they don't affect that. Google News. I don't know if you're familiar with the history of Google News, but Google News is 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 a, a, a way to display news content. Uh, in a way that clusters the content around topics. That's kind of very, very simple. And it was, uh, it's, an, it's an interesting story, by the way, I don't know if you have two minutes, but like, it, it started off after 9-11, after the attack to the Twin Towers, because somebody who was looking for the Twin Towers in reality was receiving information about the Twin, tower, the Twin Towers on Wikipedia and in reality was looking for news. So, so, well, there should be a better experience for this. There should be a part that is dedicated to news that then aggregates everything about the event. So somebody had that brilliant idea and created Google News and it is what it is today. So it's, a, it's simply a way to re-aggregate content for, on a specific topic and of a, of a, around a specific type of content. So that is not affected by AMP pages. Um, just like we will start serving AMP pages on the, on the organic SERP pages, we will start serving AMP pages in Google News when, uh, when the time is ripe, when we feel that everything's ready. Yes, please. Next. Yeah, please. Uh, AMP pages will get some enhancement in the indexing for the pages. Uh, the topic of indexing is always very, uh, very sensitive, okay? So uh, the answer is no. The answer is AMP doesn't affect the indexing. And le let me tell you why. And, and if, if you ask me that question again in five years, the answer is I, I have no idea. I don't have crystal ball today. But today there is no, um, there is no impact on the indexing. The, um, the reason for that is that today, as I showed, they are a child of another page, right? So when we understand that there is an AMP page that can be served, we take it and, and deliver it. But our strength in search is really understand the meaning of a page. And to understand the meaning of the page, we still have to rely on the mother page, on the overarching page. Uh, you're familiar with the way our algorithm works. Are you not? Somewhat. Yes. Uh, in reality, I was expecting like nobody does, like nobody does. But the, um, we know that the basic functionality behind it is page rank. 
So the links between the pages that tell us and inform Google about what a page is really about. Those links, those connections still exist at the higher level, so at the mother level. So we still rely on that understanding of the page to know what it is about and to deliver it only if it's a mobile device calling, we say, hey, is there something faster that I can provide? Then we use the AMP page to deliver it. So today is just simply uh, a better consumption experience, not a better understanding experience. Yeah, because mobile pages already improve in the indexing, H HTTPS pages improve, so I thought that Yeah, AMP there, there is no signal for that. There is no signal for, signal for AMP today. Yes, pl yeah, please, yes. Hi. Um, I was wondering how it all fits in with metrics and analytics um, and whether sure. you have to do custom tagging for it or if it will be so. No, um, no, you shouldn't do custom tagging for it. There are specific component, AMP component for analytics and we support every analytics platform out there. Great. Very much. Thanks. Um, thank you. Um, maybe this is a little bit unfair but I mean what I hear uh, yep. in this conversation is basically that Facebook Instant Article is a closed format um, that everybody understands what does. Yep. And it sounds to me like Google AMP is an open format that nobody understands what does. So I guess my question is, um, do you have sort of a communication problem maybe in terms of sort of communicating to the people that you are collaborating with beyond the ones who have been directly involved in developing the product, what this actually can, does? Can, so can I ask you what, what you mean by nobody understands what it does? Um, it seems to me that a lot of the questions here suggest that, that people who work with Google AMP or try to work with Google AMP in news organizations uh, don't feel that they can quite um, um, predict what exactly the implications are for their organization. I mean, you give an yep. example from, from your site that you don't quite understand how do you get into the carousel. Um, there are questions around search indexing. Uh, people are wondering, will this and somehow impact yeah. the, uh, the search results we get, the, the organic traffic. So it seems to me that, that you have approached this in a very collaborative fashion and involved a lot of stakeholders in the process, um, but that there may still be a, an issue of trying to communicate what this actually does for publishers. Okay, so thanks for, for clarifying. Um, I, don't, I honestly don't think we have Based on the uptake and the response that we've gotten from publishers, I don't think we have a communication problem. That said, uh, I, I would agree that we never communicate enough. Uh, we, and by we I mean, um, certainly we at Google, but we also on other platforms are doing and putting a lot of effort into communicating to really the kind of the industry and the ecosystem that surrounds the web. Um, <coughs> the benefits of, of AMP and what it does and why it should be embraced and why it's a good thing for everybody. So we do that a lot. An open source initiative, if I may say, is a little bit more complicated to explain in its nature than a very kind of narrow, proprietary, and defined format. But then where I would challenge your statement is, do people today understand how to track Instant articles. Do people understand how to monetize instant articles? I, I'm not even sure they do, but it, but it, I won't. I won't get into. That. Uh, yeah. I will. If you don't mind, I would like to add one point. Um, AMP is the web. So as we were saying before, you don't understand exactly, or you cannot predict exactly if you show up in a carousel in a normal HTML as well as you don't understand exactly, or predict rather than understand exactly how you show up in AMP HTML. That's the different element. And it doesn't only work in Google's carousel, it works on a number of platforms. And it will have a different behavior in the different platforms as the web. Um. The, uh, and again, I, this is another topic where we can keep talking for a long time. Um, there is the uh, Google, ver the weight of traffic of Google versus the weight of traffic of Facebook today. Um, I think there are questions being asked on both sides, right? It's the topic of hosted content. Uh, on one side, like how am I, am I losing control of that? So the nervousness of really not understanding properly how it works, I think it's more connected to 
the, the general trends underlying the evolution of, the, of technology and the web than the nature of the AMP HTML uh, initiative, which may be a little bit more complicated, but being open source, we feel, is a much better guarantee for the future success of it, because it will, it will be the web, as opposed to being you know, one actor saying, okay, you do it this way. So we'll stick to it, I think. Yeah. <laughs> what about ads into uh, AMP pages outside AdSense? Uh, you can, what do you use? Ad uh, advertising Yeah. What, into what? AMP pages outside AdSense. Uh, you can, there is a dump ad, uh, AdSense tag. Yeah, you can use DFP, oh, yeah. AppNexus, uh, like name it, whatever ad server you use. I, I, apart from very specific regional ones that we're still kind of... I use a re uh, Revive ad server. Okay, Don't I have pay? to be honest, I do, the, not, the old I do not know of that one, but I can get back to you on it. Okay, uh, I, have, I haven't, um, I have not a tag to use into one pages. Or maybe we are not to send out to use there it. Are tags, there are tags for, for these ad servers. In case, there is, in case some of you use as a third party that is not yet supported, what they can do, being an open platform, being an open source project, they can definitely go on GitHub and develop their own component. So you were saying Revive? Perfect. Tell Revive, I really want to keep using your monetization tool. Please provide me with an AMP component. And uh, on, Git, on GitHub, there is a forum and there's support. So if they say, hey, I don't really don't know how to do it, can, can somebody help me? There will be lots of help. We contribute to the help. So to, we make sure that these things are just you know, being, being answered. Anything else? Cool. Um, I hope this was useful. Uh, we are a big believer, so we put all our weight behind the uh, AMP. You will see more and more of it. You will see it extend beyond the carousel uh, to search, to other apps. Uh, we, we had our CEO, Sunda Pichai, for those who know him, announce it. That gives you a sense of how important and how strongly we feel about this. So uh, be ready to see more about AMPs um, in the following months. Thank you.